An uncommon class of heterogeneous stars is known as wolf rayet stars. Called in short WR stars, these stars exhibit strong wide emission lines of ionized helium, and highly ionized nitrogen or carbon in their unique spectrum. wolf rayet stars are rare, big and hot. I will try to keep it without many technical terms, this is a very interesting subject to follow, the research is still in progress, the implications in stellar formation and evolution are major. Welcome back to my channel. Star spectrum is the information about a star's temperature, chemical makeup, and inherent luminosity. A series of photographs taken at various wavelengths of the slit, in the star's light makeup spectrograms, made by slit spectrographs, produced a spectrum that shows intense star winds, hydrogen depletion, and very significant surface amplification of heavy elements. Wolf rayet stars are known to have surface temperatures that range from 20,000 Kelvin to about 210,000 Kelvin, making them hotter than practically all other types of stars. Earlier, they were referred to as W-type stars because of their spectral classification. Classic stars or so-called population 1 stars, the wolf rayet stars or evolved stars, are massive and have completely lost their hydrogen fusing helium or heavier elements in the core. A subset of the population 1 wolf rayet stars, show hydrogen lines in their spectra and are known as W and H stars, with helium and nitrogen exposed at the surface due to severe mixing and radiation-driven mass loss, these young, highly massive stars are still fusing hydrogen at their cores. The central stars of planetary nebulae or CSPNE, post-asymptotic big branch stars that resemble the Sun on the main sequence, but have since ceased fusion, and lost their atmospheres to reveal a bare carbon-oxygen core, are a different class of stars with WR spectra. All wolf rayet stars are highly luminous objects due to their high temperatures, thousands of times the bolometric luminosity of the Sun, hundreds of thousands bolometric luminosity of the Sun for the population 1 WR stars, to over a million bolometric luminosity of the Sun for the W and H stars, although not quite that bright visually since most of their radiation output is in the ultraviolet. Some naked eye visible stars, that are wolf rayet stars, are Gamma Valorum, and Theta Muscae, as well as one of the most massive known stars, R, 136, A1, in Tarantula Nebula, also known as 30 Doradus. Strong broad emission lines of helium and nitrogen, WN series, carbon, WC sequence, and oxygen, WO sequence, are observed in wolf rayet stars, a typical stage in the evolution of very massive stars. They are easily distinguishable in surrounding galaxies thanks to their robust emission lines. The number of wolf rayet stars in our own Milky Way galaxy is estimated to be 500. As a result of photometric and spectroscopic surveys in the near-infrared, aimed at finding this type of object in the galactic plane, this number has altered significantly over the previous several years. Less than 1000 WR stars are anticipated to exist in the remaining local group galaxies, of which there are approximately 166 in the Magellanic Clouds, 206 in M33, and 154 in M31. The broad and dense high velocity of the solar wind zone, surrounding the extremely hot star photosphere, is where the characteristic emission lines are formed. This wind region undergoes fluorescence due to an excessive UV light produced by the UV radiation flood. The nitrogen-rich byproducts of the CNO cycle burning of hydrogen, the WN stars, are revealed first by this ejection mechanism, followed by the carbon-rich layer produced by helium burning, the WC and WO type stars. WNH stars are entirely distinct from WN stars without hydrogen. Although their spectra are similar, they are significantly more massive, much larger, and some of the brightest stars ever observed. Even though the most massive WNH stars still undergo CNO cycle fusion in their cores, the nitrogen that can be seen in their spectra is produced there due to rotational and convectional mixing while the core is still burning hydrogen. Due to their generation of dust, some wolf rayet stars in the carbon sequence, the WC type, particularly those of the most recent forms can be seen.
This typically happens in binary systems because the stellar winds that make up the pair collide, as in the case of the well-known binary WR104, but this process can also happen in solitary systems. The chemical makeup of their progenitor stars affects the quantity and characteristics of wolf rayet stars. This variation is mostly caused by the rate of mass loss at various metallicity levels. Higher metallicity causes greater mass loss, which impacts both the characteristics of wolf rayet stars and the evolution of massive stars. The more massive, red supergiants, grow back to hotter temperatures before exploding as a supernova, and the most massive stars, never become red supergiants, because higher levels of mass loss cause stars to shed their outer layers, before an iron core develops and collapses. Higher mass loss causes a stronger depletion of the layers outside the convective core, lower hydrogen surface abundances, and more rapid helium stripping, to generate AWC spectrum in the wolf rayet stage. These patterns may be seen in the several local group galaxies, where metallicity varies from near solar levels in the Milky Way, to slightly lower levels in M31, lower still in the Large Magellanic Cloud, and considerably lower levels in the Small Magellanic Cloud. Individual galaxies have strong metallicity fluctuations, with M33 and the Milky Way exhibiting higher metallicities nearer the center, and M31 exhibiting higher metallicities in the disk than in the halo. The Milky Way has roughly equal numbers of WN and WC stars, and a large total number of WR stars, whereas the other main galaxies have slightly fewer WR stars, and more WN than WC types. As a result, the small Magellanic Cloud is observed to a few WR stars compared to its stellar formation rate and no WC stars at all. Wolf rayet stars from Large Magellanic Cloud, and Small Magellanic Cloud in particular, exhibit weaker emission and a propensity for larger atmospheric hydrogen percentages. Due to lesser winds partially covering the photosphere, small Magellanic Cloud's WR stars nearly always exhibit some hydrogen. The rate of spin of a star affects mass loss, notably substantially at low metallicity. Fast rotation promotes surface abundances of heavy elements, drives mass loss, and helps mix core fusion products throughout the rest of the star. Stars that rotate spend more time on the main sequence than stars that do not rotate, grow out of the red supergiant phase more quickly, or even transition directly from the main sequence to higher temperatures in the case of very high masses, high metallicity, or very rapid rotation. Massive stars rapidly experience a rotational breaking due to the loss of angular momentum caused by stellar mass loss. While remaining on the main sequence, very massive stars with near solar metallicity should be nearly brought to a stop, whereas at small Magellanic cloud metallicity, they can continue to revolve quickly even at the highest observed masses. The unusual characteristics and abundance of SMC's WR stars, such as their comparatively high temperatures and luminosities, may be explained by the rapid rotation of massive stars. Instead of naturally losing mass due to a stellar wind, Massive stars in binary systems can grow into wolf rayet stars through stripping by a companion. This method is likely to produce a consistent set of WR stars throughout all the local group galaxies, since it is generally insensitive to the metallicity or rotation of the individual stars. In low metallicity settings, the fraction of WR stars created via the binary channel and consequently the number of WR stars seen to be in binary should be larger. Although less than half of the WR stars in the SMC are observed to have a large companion, calculations indicate that the binary fraction of these stars could be as high as 98%. Based on theoretical studies, the Milky Way's binary proportion is approximately 20%. A substantial fraction of WR stars are surrounded by nebulosity that is directly related to the star, as opposed to just the background nebulosity that is often present in any region where massive stars are developing, or a planetary nebula created by a post-AGB star. Nebulosity comes in a wide range of shapes, making classification challenging. A planetary nebula around a low-mass post-AGB star, can often only be distinguished from a similarly shaped nebula, surrounding a more massive core helium-burning star by a rigorous multi-wavelength analysis. Many were initially classified as planetary nebulae. 
when there are enough WR stars for their distinctive emission line spectra to be discernible in the galaxy's overall spectrum, the galaxy is said to be a wolf ray galaxy. Because WR stars have a very short lifespan, starbursts in these galaxies must have occurred recently, and must have lasted less than a million years, in order to prevent the WR emission from being obliterated by a huge number of other brilliant stars. In contrast to the explanation of less extreme stellar evolution, theories explaining the formation, growth, and demise of WR stars have taken longer to emerge. Even in the 21st century, many aspects of their life are still shrouded by their rarity, distance, and frequent obscurity. The nature of wolf ray at stars was unknown until the latter part of the 20th century, despite the fact that they have been recognized as an uncommon, and distinctive type of stars since the 19th century. Even the classification of WR stars was extremely speculative until to the 1960s, and their nature and evolution were virtually unknown. The doubt was caused by the striking resemblance in appearance between the classical WR stars and the center stars of planetary nebulae. The difference between large luminous classical WR stars and center stars of planetary nebulae became increasingly obvious around 1960. However, it is still unclear whether the material was being ejected from the star, or was converging onto it. Studies revealed that they were small, dense stars, surrounded by a substantial amount of circumstellar debris. It was acknowledged that there were unusually high concentrations of nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and traces of hydrogen, but the causes remained a mystery. Although it was acknowledged that WR stars were extremely young and uncommon, it remained unclear whether they were moving toward or away from the main sequence. Massive stars give rise to wolf ray at stars, albeit by the time the evolved population 1 stars exhibit a WR appearance, they have lost half or more of their original masses. High mass stars are extremely uncommon since they originate infrequently and have brief lives. Because they only develop from the most massive main sequence stars, and because they represent a very brief stage in the lives of those stars, wolf ray at stars themselves are extremely rare. But W and H stars are an exception, and still retain a significant portion of their initial mass. They appear spectroscopically similar but are actually far less developed stars that have just begun to evacuate their atmosphere. Since W and H stars reveal helium and nitrogen at their surfaces, only a few thousand years after they form, possibly before they become visible through the surrounding gas cloud, it is believed that they are all more massive than O-type main sequence stars. Another hypothesis is that these stars were created by the merger of smaller, less extreme stars because they are too big to originate as typical main sequence stars. Theories that they originate through binary interactions, which could speed up the loss of a star's outer layers through mass exchange, have emerged as a result of the challenges in modeling the observed numbers and types of wolf ray at stars through single star evolution. A possible example is WR-122, which has a nearly 2 trillion miles wide flat disk of gas encircling the star, and may have a companion star that removed its outer envelope. Even though no definitive identification of such a progenitor has been established, it is widely believed that many Type 1b and Type 1c supernova progenitors are WR stars. Hydrogen lines are absent from the spectra of Type 1b supernovae. Both hydrogen and helium lines are absent from the spectra of the more prevalent Type 1c supernovae. Massive stars that are deficient in either hydrogen, or both hydrogen and helium, in their outer layers are predicted to be the progenitors of such explosions. WR stars fall into this category. All WR stars are hydrogen deficient, and certain WR stars, most notably those in the WO group, are also severely helium depleted. When WR stars produce an iron core, it is expected that they would experience core collapse, leading to type 1b or 1c supernova explosions. Direct core collapse into a black hole might occasionally occur without causing an obvious explosion. The hottest WR stars, which are anticipated to make up the majority of supernova progenitors, are projected to be the most luminous due to their high temperatures, but not visibly bright. Although they impose limitations on their characteristics, theory implies that the progenitors of Type 1b supernovae recorded to date would not be luminous enough to be discovered. 
Our 136A1 is the most massive and brightest star currently known. It is a WNH type Wolf Rayet star that is still fusing hydrogen in its core. This kind of star, which contains many of the most brilliant and massive stars, is extremely young, and is typically only present at the center of the densest star clusters. A runaway WNH star, like VFTS 682, is occasionally discovered outside of these clusters. It was likely ejected from a multiple system or through interaction with other stars. The very hottest non-degenerate stars are all wolf rayet stars, with WR102 appearing to be as hot as 210,000 Kelvin, and WR142 being close behind at about 200,000 Kelvin. The Campbell star, also known as HD 184738, as opposed to the majority of large wolf rayet stars, is an ancient, is a low-mass star, making it a planetary nebula. Theories about how WR stars form and evolve is progressing slowly, compared to the explanation of less extreme stellar evolution. They are rare, distant, and often obscured, and even into the 21st century many aspects of their lives are unclear. This is it for today, for sure Wolf Rayet star is very interesting, I hope you like it. Please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.